said last week you're going to let the season play out, or at least there were a lot of games left you were looking forward to. What changed? Well, you know, I just felt like looking at the last couple games, few games actually, uh, that this team needed different leadership, so I made the change. Move over to the left, Andy Anders, 11 Warriors. Uh, yeah, how tough was this for you personally? I mean, you, you, I'm sure you don't want to fire someone on, on your way out, out the door as athletic director. Well, it's hard, you know. Um, It's really hard. Spencer, when you over. have good people and you care about people, then it's hard. Um, if you don't have a good person and you really don't care about the person, it's easier. Um, but when you care about someone like I do, um, it makes it hard. I apologize. Yeah, I, I apologize. Spencer Holbrook, Latimer Monroe. Gene, is there a process that you're going to go through with Ross as far as getting this, the next steps done? And, and what does that look like since he's still finishing things up and you're obviously finishing your own journey? Yeah, I've had a good communications with Ross along the way here about this issue and um, shared with him uh, along the way uh, the decision that had to be made. And uh, we've talked uh, about process moving forward, and uh, I'll help him along the way. You, you talk, just talked about how you know, we have good people. It's, it's hard to do. Uh, the saying is that the coaches always have, you know, the list. No matter what the, the program looks like, you always got the list of who you, who you would like. Uh, has that been the case with you? And, and do you see this being, once the season wraps up, a pretty rapid process, or is this something that's going to take some time? Yeah, you know, that's a great question for Ross. I really don't know. Sorry. Uh, uh, Doug Lay Maurice, Kings of the North. Gene, when you're in your position, how do you balance personal relationships? What kind of people are involved? with the needs of the program and what's best for the team. Is, what, what's that balance like? Well, the, the, really the answer is in your question, Doug. You know, mm -hmm. my responsibility is to the program and it's to these young men that uh, compete every single day. Um, I don't care what sport it is and whatever it is, my, my responsibility is to those young people and, and to the program. And so uh, I just felt uh, at this particular time, with six regular season games left and uh, what um, Big Ten tournament and you know, whatever the postseason brings, um, you know, a spark of energy was needed. And so, um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's about the program in the end. And I have to set aside my personal feelings um, and just go uh, with what's best for the program. Adam Jardy, Columbus Dispatch. Gene, about two, three years ago, you made a plan with Chris to build through youth and, and let that youth go through some bumps but come out of the other side of it. It seems like there's still a chance for that youth to maybe get to the potential that you guys saw. Why, why does that plan not work? Why is it time to change leadership um, when you could still you know, maybe give that another year? Yeah, I think uh, you know the, uh, the young men have played hard. They've given a lot. Um, but. Uh, the reality is, um, you know, the body of work over this last year, um, we've, I felt, felt uh, that they needed something different uh, from a leadership point of view to give them that chance. While they're young, there's a lot of minutes on that floor, a lot. And so um, they still have six home games in, in the tournament. So I wanted to give them a shot, and uh, that's what they have. You're saying so you still believe in the talent on this team, just that talent was not being realized the level you wanted to see it. That's right. Over to the right, Cameron T. Robinson, the athletic. Gene, you mentioned um, the timetable's kind of up to Ross, but what will be your role in that process as Ross kind of gets out? Yeah, so obviously uh, we, we still had a remainder of the season, which, you know, I'm going to help Jake with and, and uh, uh, help navigate. And then when Ross gets here, as he shares with me his plan for the search, I'll be there to assist him and be very much a part of it and um, in conversation and background in, uh, information, things of that nature. So, but it'll be pretty much completely led by, by him? Yeah, yeah, but I'll be, a, I'll be a part of it. Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Again, how much input did Ross have in terms of coming to this decision? Did you talk to him a lot before you made this decision? Yeah, I talked to him a lot, but it was my decision. You know, I told him what I was going to do. It wasn't like, what do you think? 
And you made the decision a couple years ago to give Chris a contract extension. Obviously, that increases what the buyout is now. Do you have any regrets about making that decision at that time? Of course you do. I, I have many regrets in my lifetime. I've been doing this a long time. If I could fix all the regrets that I, I have in my life, I'd fix them all. But certainly, that's one of them. Over to the left, Mitch Stacy, Associated Press. Uh, how much more difficult is it to be a basketball coach at a Power Five program now than seven years ago when you hired Chris? Well, that's a great question. I think it's, it's harder on all coaches in every sport now. I mean, if you think of the aggregate of all the issues that uh, each coach is faced with now, um, you know, the transfer portal, the lawsuits, the NIL, uh, and uncertainty about what's coming relative to, you know, our structure and, and the model, uh, it's, uh, it's harder today. You know, the, the, the industry's harder. So it's harder for basketball coaches and all coaches. But, you know, the basketball coaches, you know, they have different windows around the transfer portal. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. How much do you think Chris struggled with all those changes? That yeah, no, 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 that's a good question for Chris. So I'm not going to get into that. I appreciate the question, though. That's not for me to answer. Back row middle. Clay Hall, WSYX. Were there things that you tried to change the course? I know you're not going to talk about where he fell short, but was it the same kind of thing? Uh, and, and what did you tell him? I think we need to do better here, there. Yeah, Clay, I'm not going to get into that. I appreciate that. No. With all due respect, I'm just not going to go there. Andy Backstrom, Letterman Row. Gene, you talked about how it's getting harder now for college basketball coaches. Just what is the standard right now for Ohio State men's basketball in a changing landscape of just college sports? There's nothing changed for any of our sports. You know, I think we have 13 or 14 ranked in the top 25 right now. Uh, well, we're getting ready to watch one of them, a great one. I mean, that, nothing's changed. I mean, all of our programs have the same standard. Uh, the blessing that we have at the Ohio State University is to recruit to this platform, to recruit to Columbus, uh, the resources that Buckeye Nation provides us. So uh, the standard for men's basketball is the same. Uh, be in the hunt, periodically win the championship, and, and go deep into the postseason. And that hasn't changed. And, and so um, that hasn't been accomplished. Uh, we need to do better. Back row, Steve Hellwagen, 24-7 Sports. Yeah, Gene, back so straight Steve. ahead. Uh, to make a decision of this magnitude with this amount of money involved, I assume that President Carter had to be involved. What were those conversations like? Uh, you've just gotten to know him in the last three months. Just what what was those what were those discussions like, I suppose? Well, President Carter is unbelievable, um, obviously because of his athletic background and his understanding of, of our space. Um, conversations are pretty straightforward and frank, and, and he's a decision maker, which I like. There's no gray area, and so uh, he agreed. He supported, and we made the made the decision. If I can also ask, 19 years you've been here, so many great ups, downs, many great things have happened, great accomplishments. As you bring in Ross and welcome him to this community and everything that goes with it, what are the recommendations that you're going to make to Ross about? What can be done to improve the fan experience, the overall environment, and getting people to come back to the Schottenstein Center to watch Ohio State men's basketball? It just died on the vine in the last three years. What can you do? What can you recommend to him so in your funny. mind that needs to be done? Yeah, so funny. I mean, you guys are opinion makers. Um, to say that it died on the vine. Lowest attendance you've ever had. Yeah, but it's still 8,000. I mean, you know, you, back we can debate back. that all we want to, but at the end of the day, is this is out of 8,000 uh, fans at the last game that we won. So the facts are this. Um, we have to have expectations consistent with reality. There's going to be games throughout the year where you're going to only have eight or ten. You guys seem to forget that conversation from like ten years ago. The reality is that's going to happen. It happened during Thad Mata's years. Go back and look at the numbers. There were eight and 10,000 fans periodically throughout the season. However, to your point, 
there's got to be six, seven, or eight games where we're close to that sellout or at the sellout. Um, we haven't had that, to your point. That's really what you're talking about. It hadn't died on the vine. At the end of the day, uh, we need to get better. We need to win. And my advice to Ross is simple. Product, place, price. That's marketing. You got to win. You got to win. Uh, Adam King, WBNS. Kind of going off of that, Gene. You've done a good job in your career of being, bringing in good people that are also good coaches. I know you're not going to make this decision with Ross, but how much are you going to try to instill what it takes to put Ohio State back where they were just 10 years ago in the program? While yeah, also, right? I'm going to be all in. I'm going to be all in with Ross. I'm going to be honest, forthright, um, authentic, and genuine. And uh, tell him that, you know, we got to find somebody that has the X's and O's and those talents and skills, but uh, they got to fit our values, they got to fit our culture. Um, so I'll be involved. It, it, it'll be heavy. Guys, I'm going to go just a few more questions over to the right. Pat Murphy, 24 7 Sports. Uh, Gene, you mentioned the last few games, uh, but nine of the last 11 have been losses. Why was this game after Wisconsin the time you decided to? Well, it's um, something I obviously have been thinking about for a little bit. And, um, you know, I, I am so appreciative that Jake Diebler stepped up and accepted the challenge. Uh, that's not easy. Uh, you know, I, I hope you guys appreciate that, that what he's doing is not easy. And uh, so my heart uh, is with him to a great degree. Uh, but we have a little runway. You know, it's, you know, it's, you have days between now and Sunday where you have time to accept the emotions of this moment and adjust and begin to coach our kids. I mean, it's, there's some games where you only have two and a half days to recover. Actually, less than a, it's a day and a half because you get on a plane to go somewhere. So uh, the runway uh, for him uh, is the best that it could possibly be when you're this deep in the season. So. Um, I'm so appreciative of, of him just stepping up and, and being a warrior and uh, taking this on. What do you see of Jake stepping in from, on the court? What, what do you imagine he'll be as a coach? You know, it's hard to imagine except, um, you know, I, I think he's a very good coach. I think he's going to gonna demonstrate, um, you know, for the kids um, just at the end of the day that we just need to keep fighting all the way through. And, and he's going to do that. And, uh, so I, I, I feel good about it. Joe Nugent, WCMH. With making the decision now, will it put the program at a position of strength in terms of the search? Can it start it a little bit earlier? I know Ross won't you know, yeah. do it. But. And it's not a, not a big gain. Uh, you can do some, some background checking and, and things of that nature, but it's not a huge gain uh, because you really can't begin to talk to candidates till the end of the season. You know, it's so... Um, you know, it's, it's more about, you know, these six games and where these kids are and, and trying to give them a spark. Um, and hopefully, uh, you know, it shows up on the floor. Guys, I appreciate the time. I've always appreciated you. So, sorry I got to roll. Thanks.